the goal of this uh, stream today is actually to show like a few facts here. So for example, like Europeans don't work hard enough. Uh, I, I used to live in the US. Uh, I, I don't think this shit is true. Um, like if you look at the official reports and like it depends on the country, you know, um, the reality here is actually, in my opinion, um, so like there's like, come on, I, I can like throw charts at this forever, you know, but I'm not going to answer memes with, with, with facts, you know, like that, that, that's something a sane person would do. Uh, instead, I want to like, just like basically counter memes and general opinion with like my personal opinion, because that's the one that counts. I have been a lot in the US for the last few years. I, I, I lived there for multiple US. Um, like Americans like to talk about working hard. And I think it has to do with the fact at the moment you lose your job, you lose your insurance and something like that and your livelihood and everything. So maybe that's the reason, I don't know, but they really, really love talking about. Uh, the thing is, in reality, they don't work much harder. Like if you're in an average rework in San Francisco, 6 p.m. everybody's gone. As sad as this sounds, you know, like I wish it wouldn't be true. And I'm not saying like founders don't work hard there, like founders work hard everywhere. You know, it's their freaking job to work hard. I'm saying it's not disproportionate. I can build an easily a way more, better team and like hardworking team in Europe than for example, in San Francisco. Um, another one, which I regularly hear here is um, that Europe life is too com comfortable. And again, like it kind of depends where you're based, right? Uh, Europe is big, you know, and, and more importantly, I don't even believe that this whole story around hardship and perseverance is actually that like much true. In many cases, it comes out of this hero arc that like almost everybody does in the US when they present their own CV, uh, where they like tell you how they came from nothing and are now here. Um, if you give the typical um, upbringing of like, a I don't know, Romanian founder from like 10 years ago uh, to any Ivy grad in the US, uh, they would give a TED talk that you would start crying in the end. Like, honestly, they're just like really good at storytelling. And a lot of this is like so ingrained into the culture and we're not used to doing that. Um, more importantly, um, I don't think it's even like a criteria, like if hardship would be one of the factors that matter to get like good investments, this shit wouldn't happen. You know, it wouldn't be that like all the big investments are going to um, uh, Stanford grads and other Ivy League, you know. Um, it's, yeah. Um, so uh, other one, uh, uh, the taxes are too high. And this was also like in the chat. I, I, I don't believe that. I honestly don't believe that. Uh, if you want to optimize for taxes in Europe, you can do that. Uh, I, I, I try to make a chart here. It's like not really like <laughs> easy to read, but basically if you want, you get away with like 10, 15, 20% taxes in Europe. If this would be an argument, if this would be something people are actually pushing for, everybody would move to those countries in Europe, right? Like this isn't the main argument. This isn't the main problem. Um, and I'm not saying that taxes are like perfect here. Don't get me wrong. Like huge issue, obviously for many, you know? But that's not the core, the root issue. Um, the risk mentality is my main pet beef, you know? It's kind of like as if mentality is something that doesn't exist in a system, you know? Like as if mentality is something that um, just, you know, is genetic or something. That's not how this works, right? Um, like there's a reason for that. Let me switch the layout actually. Um, but more importantly, I don't even believe it's that much, that true. Um, I think Europe is like one of the biggest sources of immigrant founders for the US. Uh, I think second one is India. Um, and a fifth of all unicorn founders in the US are actually American, uh, sorry, European. Um, if risk awareness would, uh, would be like awareness would like be genetic. Like we wouldn't even have them, you know, and you could argue it's like self-selection to go to the States and everything. I, I don't believe that, you know? Um, so yeah, um, the real read cause is like as, as many people in the chat said is fragmentation, at least from my point of view, this is the big, 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 big issue we have here. There's like a really, really good post here on Reddit, uh, from two years ago that basically just summarizes the, the, the POV on the consumer market. Um, He's like Danish and he explains how like in the 80s, he used Danish software like DSI, which already had like support for Danish grammar and Danish spelling and everything. 
and he used Pascal and so on and so on. And those companies just couldn't keep up with the acceleration that American companies had, who had like a several hundred million population consumer market. And that kind of acceleration, that kind of early pull is like something really, really important to many companies. When, when we did Product Hunt, I honestly swear to God, every day we fricked, we fracked something up and we still every day had so much pull. There was like always like something coming up, like, if you have actual market pull, this changes everything. And to find market pull in a population of like 5 million or 200 million is like a huge difference. We have almost no shared media. We have almost no shared consumer market. This is a huge problem on the consumer side. I, I'm not saying I'm going to fix this, okay? I'm not, maybe like, maybe somebody, somebody in the chat is going to fix this. It's not going to be me this time. Um, yeah, and so on and so on, okay? But, um, this stream is not about complaining about Europe, okay? Um, this stream is um, about showing like a few realities, okay? Um, because I think one of the big things we have to actually do is we have to change the narrative. We have to change how uh, Europe is perceived because by now uh, there's like two problems with the means. One is there fundamentally wrong on many levels and the other one is that they're fundamentally true okay so one second okay cool um so we have two problems with the memes uh number one is that they're fundamentally wrong and th th what's, what's even worse is that they're actually true in many cases okay europe doesn't have the technical innovation that we need we are um, very 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 much known for quality of life we are known for a premium life standard at least western europe you know like keep for keep forgetting that it is not like all of europe um, but that premium lifestyle comes from premium jobs. That comes from the fact that we have co companies that are producing things that are worth the, the people's time that are in there, okay? But we need to change the other part of the narrative, like the memes that just make fun of it, because there's so much things we can actually be proud of, okay? And this is like what we need in Europe, like as, um, as like a change of narrative. And I'm the worst for this, okay? Honestly, like I'm Austrian, like we rent, by default, okay? Like if, if Austrians, like especially Viennese people, if they don't complain for more than five minutes, you know, they'll get like nervous and everything. So I'm the worst person to talk positive about anything, okay? But like still, this is important. Um, we need to celebrate European excellence, okay? Uh, and we are honestly the last generation who might be able to do this. We are the last generation who can fix the European Union and because, okay, let's, let's <laughs> just said I wanted to say much more nice stuff, you know, but like there's the Austrian again. We are at a point where I talk to young founders, like early 20s in Europe, who are having projects that can that are perfectly placed. They have the net local network, they have the talent locally, everything. They still think that they need to move to the US to actually start it. Not to move to the US when they get big enough. They think they need to move to the US already before they have even started to have even a chance. And that's a downward spiral. That needs to stop, that needs to change, okay? They grew up with all these memes, you know? And in many cases, Twitter is like very much focused on American POV of everything. We need to actually show the facts about Europe, okay? Because we have all the parts. We have the tech talent, we have the founders of ambition, we have the research, you know? We just need to get the baseline to work to remove a little bit of the friction so that in, um, entrepreneurs can actually really, really, really accelerate here. So let me check. Um, okay. So uh, let's, let's actually do this quickly, okay? So um, I wanna show like a few here and then afterwards we show a few more. Number one, we have like world-class universities and we'll go into this a bit later because we have like a whole segment on this. Um, but European research is among the best in the world, okay? Uh, a lot of the stuff that you perceive to be AI innovation is actually coming from Europe. Um, we got the people. Um, this is like something that a lot of people don't know is we have actually more talent moving to the to Europe than leaving and this is like almost like to me like almost like a, 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 narrative, a, a narrative violation or it's called anything like that um, we are also extremely liberal when it comes to uh, business which is surprising to any you know 
uh, European countries are like higher strengths on those factors. Um, we are also way more optimistic about AI than anybody else in the world. Which is also like, you would assume that Europe, with like all the GDPR, all the AI regulations, actually very defensive and like very negative about AI. It's a complete opposite. If you ask people on the street, we are very, very optimistic of AI. Uh, of AI. And maybe like GDPR, and this is like a hot take, maybe like GDPR in a few years from now, we'll look back at the AI regulation and be like, ah, wasn't like perfect, but wasn't like not a bad idea, you know, so TBD on that. Another one is we are actually uh, known for having the highest business founder per capita in the world, in many European cities, which is also something that people just don't realize. Europe, like, and, and again, any stat, any chart, you can nitpick the hell out of it, okay? This is not, you know, but on the other hand, that's the same what like uh, a lot of the memes on, on the, in the US are doing, okay? Um, we have multiple cities with the highest business founders per capita in the world. And we have like multiple other stats like that. We have the biggest, uh, uh, we're known for extreme economic freedom and so on and so on and so on, okay? And like a ton more, okay? Um, um, what I want to do now is I actually, because I'm not an expert for a lot of this stuff, okay? Um, I'm an investor who invests in uh, uh, companies globally. Um, uh, I'm an investor who invests in companies globally. I, I have like more than 100 investments and only like 20 to 30 of them are actually in Europe, okay? I wanted to get somebody on who is uh, an investor uh, who has experience in Europe and is actually focusing on, um, uh, uh, um, what's the term, uh, deep tech, okay? Uh, because... I honestly believe that with every technological revolution, there is a whole chance, chance for like a generation to change the playbook. Um, wait a second. Okay. Um, there's a whole change, uh, ch ch chance for a generation to change the whole market and the playbook. We have this right now with AI. We have this right now with robotics. Uh, we have this soon in multiple other areas. Okay. And I want to get on Sam. Um, I wanted to get on Sam for this to talk a little bit about deep tech. Mm. The reason why I want to talk about deep tech is um, two reasons. Uh, number one, it's hip with investors. And number two, uh, and when I, when I say hip with investors, I, I don't want really to discredit, but like I know VC funds who invested in GIF apps, who invested in meme apps, and now all of a sudden do defense tech, okay? Since 2021, a lot of investors are kind of like, oh, 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 we need to actually invest in serious things, okay? There's a bunch of those investors who have done this for, since ages, who have done this already before. Um, and um, Sam is one of them. And we are actually good in it. We have Paris, London, and Munich. We have the Nordics. Like, we're really, really good in multiple aspects here. 